Welcome everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program Sandbox Mode where Jeb and I have fun with rockets. Except in this case, we're not going to be having fun with rockets, we're going to be doing some science, which is not something this series is going to be particularly strong at. So in this particular case, we're going to look at a mod. And this particular mod we're going to be looking at is the Kerbal Engineering mod that helps you work out how best to put your spacecraft together. So I've built this little spacecraft, rather nifty looking spacecraft, but I need to know, is it going to get into orbit? Now you could probably tell me no, and I'd agree with you. It probably doesn't have enough fuel, let alone having, well, maybe a powerful enough engine, maybe not. I don't know, and that's the point. I don't know. So we can install a mod, in this case, as I say, Kerbal Engineering, and it gives us three new parts we can add to our craft. Now, a lot of mods of this type come with a part, and the mod isn't activated until you add the part. So if you find your mod's not working, if you find buttons aren't appearing on the screen or whatever you expect it to happen isn't working, make sure you've added your part to your craft. Now, this particular mod comes with three parts. It comes with this rather handy dandy, rather nifty looking tape drive unit, rather 1970s tape drive unit, which gives you both statistical information in flight and in the VAB. And that's exactly the same as this more modern looking CPU device, which again gives you both flight information and statistical information in the VAB. This middle item is actually just a little bit more hardcore than the other two because it only gives you statistical information whilst you're in the VAB. It leaves you completely blind outside the VAB. So we, because we need all the help we can get, are going to take this particular module and slap it bang on the side of our module. There we go. Our command, uh, command module is now fully computerized and we now get this new display. Now I'm showing it to you in compact mode because for beginners this is the important information you need. You need to know your delta V and your thrust to weight ratio. These are two key factors that will help you establish whether your craft will get into space. But what is delta V and what is thrust to weight ratio? Now, I like to think about thrust to weight ratio as the oomph that your engine has to lift all of this weight into space. Now, of course, slightly more technically, it's the thrust that your engine has compared to the mass of your spacecraft expressed as a ratio. So in other words, we have more than four times the amount of thrust necessary to launch this vessel into space. And when we've drained every last drop of fuel, we've got almost seven times the amount of thrust necessary to get this into space. So we have got shed loads of thrust because our thrust to weight ratio is way over one. One is the key number. If you can get over one, you're laughing. One or under, you ain't going to be leaving the launch pad. So bear that in mind when you build your craft. Too much fuel, too many modules, your engine is just not going to be able to get it into space. So you'll need a bigger engine. But what's delta V? Well again, the non-technical explanation is it's the amount of effort you need to expend to get from point A to point B. So let's take the example that we want to get off the launch pad that's our point A, up to a stable orbit at about, well, let's say 80 kilometers above the surface. That's our point B. So how much effort do we need to expend to get there? And that's what delta V represents. And it represents it as a number of meters per second that you need to burn with your engine and your fuel in order to reach a certain location. Now, according to our display, stage naught, has no delta V of its own, 
whereas stage 1 can supply 1,629 units of delta V. So there you see in this column you have the running total of delta V. That's what this second number represents. But, okay, so I know I've got 1,629 delta V. So what? I know from looking at this craft I probably won't get into orbit. But how do I know when I've got enough. Fortunately, there are people cleverer than I who've already worked that out for you. If you type KSP cheat sheet into your favourite search engine, you'll come across a very handy web page. Let's go there now and find out what we need to know. Right, so here we are on the Kerbal Space Programme wiki on the cheat sheet page. Unfortunately for us, it doesn't start off too well because it starts with all that mathematics mumbo-jumbo that we're trying to avoid. But if you scroll down, you get to the Maps section. And this is where the good stuff really starts because this is where somebody else has already done the hard work. Now, you read this like you would read a subway map or a train map or a tube map. You have a station a location, a point A, and then you have a point B, which let's say is the Mun. Now between point A and point B, handily written on each of the sections, is the amount of delta V you need to get between point A and point B. So if we were going to the Mun, we'd need to add 4550, 860, 210 and 640, and that would get you to the Mun. Obviously, if you want to come back, you need to add up the numbers coming the other way. Now, of course, getting to Kerbin coming the other way is a little bit easier than going out because, of course, you're not going to land softly on lander legs. You're just going to let the atmosphere and gravity do its stuff and then deploy a parachute to bring you to a comfortable splashdown somewhere on the surface. So it's not... A exactly true to say you need double the delta V, so just bear that in mind when you're reading these maps. Now in our case, we just want to get into a low curb in orbit of 80 kilometres, and according to this chart, we need 4,550 metres per second to achieve that goal. So with that information, we can now go back to the VAB and start improving our rocket. OK, so here we are, back in the VAB, with our new information and our soothing music. Now we know we need 4,550 metres per second of delta V to get into an 80 kilometre orbit. So let's add a few more fuel tanks and see how far we can get. Let's add one more and see what we've got. So that's uh, 3967 and we've still got a healthy thrust to weight ratio. So let's add another one and see what that does. Now, we're getting pretty close, but our thrust to weight ratio is getting pretty close to one as well. Now we need 4550 meters per second of delta V to get into orbit, but we also need a little bit more to get back. Now, as we know from our discussion of the subway diagram, on the way back, you can rely on the atmosphere and a parachute to do most of the work. So we don't need 4550 to get down, but we still do need some and we could be a bit short. But let's see, because if we can use drag and a parachute to get down, surely drag is going to have an impact on the way up, but it won't have an impact all the way up, because of course the atmosphere gets thinner as you go up. And this is something you can also take into account with flight engineer, with build engineer I should say. It has this handy button that allows you to switch between atmospheric and vacuum stats. 
In the atmosphere, we have 4243 meters per second, but in a vacuum, we have 4906. So somewhere in between is going to be our actual delta V. So what's that? 4546. Oh, that's going to be a bit close. So let's go back to the compact atmospheric stats and see if we can just work on this a little bit more. So what I think we'll do is we will add a solid fuel booster. Now we know how these things work now. We've done some contracts. We know what these rockets are for. Short, powerful bursts of thrust off the launch pad to get us into space. Now let's just reset our staging, double check our delta V and fantastic. Even with atmospheric drag, we're now 4,635 meters per second total. I reckon this craft will now get us into a stable orbit and we'll still have some thrust left over to get Jeb home. So let's go out onto the launch pad and test this baby. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad. Our ship is precariously balanced on its engine. And we can see here the flight engineer display currently displaying two of its four available displays. We have the orbital display that tells us how our orbit is going. And since we're going to be getting our 80 kilometer orbit. This is all useful information. But we can also see the vessel display, which is more or less the same as the summary display we were using in the VAB. So armed with that information, we now need to get into orbit. Now there are plenty of tutorials on how to get into orbit, so I will just make this brief. Well, brief enough. Let's hit the T key to put our SAS on. Let's get our thrust to maximum, although obviously that doesn't affect our solid fuel booster. And let's launch. Now, as we know, we've only got a low thrust to weight ratio, so it's barely getting off the platform. But we are accelerating. We're going straight up. So let's see how we do. Now we know from our various tutorials that we've now quickly watched, we need to get up to about 10 kilometers before we turn over for our gravity turn to 45 degrees. But before that, let's stage to our new engine. Now we've already made 60 meters per second with our solid fuel booster. We were already about 1500 meters up. So we've got a good head start. And our acceleration is now increasing, as is our speed, as we head for the stars, or at least for an 80 kilometer orbit. Now while we're ascending, we can check out some of the extra information the flight engineer is giving us. It tells us our apoapsis height is 3,700, so that's the maximum height we're likely to get. If, let's say, we killed our engines now, we'd get to 4344 4, meters up. Our periapsis is still deep below the surface, so I don't think we're in an orbit. We can find out our time to apoapsis, so we'll be going up for 12 seconds to reach that height, 13 seconds to reach that height, and so on, and our time to crash back down and find ourselves 598,000 440 meters into the ground is almost five minutes. Now while we're chatting we need to keep an eye on our altitude and we need to begin turning and this is where our LVT 45 comes in handy with its thrust vectoring. So let's just turn over to 45 degrees and begin our gravity turn. speed is continuing to increase as we make our way into orbit. So there we go, 16 kilometers above the surface. 
Now as we continue to climb, we can check our inclination and our eccentricity. Our inclination is how much of an angle we have to the equator. So going more or less directly east, we don't have one. Our eccentricity is the difference between apoapsis and periapsis when we have an orbit. So if they're the same, we don't have a, an eccentric orbit, unlike me. Our orbital period, latitude, longitude, and then we get into some of the science stuff. This was the VAB information, and it's telling us we've got another 53 seconds of thrust from this engine at the current level of the throttle. Now we're coming up on an altitude, there we go, of 80 kilometers, so we cut the engine, ready to set our orbit. Now of course we're still in the atmosphere, so our apoapsis will begin to fall, but while we wait, let's slap on a manoeuvre in order to get into orbit. So we pull on the prograde handle until, woof, there we go. We start to get a periapse and an apoapse. Now that's probably enough, 74 and 83, that's perfect. So let's get ready to do our circularization burn. Now it's telling us we need 1,140 meters per second and we've got 1,636 left. So this is excellent information. We are going to make it. Now we've got an estimated burn of 38 seconds. So we will start burning when this gets to 19 seconds so that we burn equally either side of the node. While we approach, let's get onto our blue marker, which is the direction we need to thrust in when the time comes, about 15 seconds or so. And we're getting ready and go. There we are expending our effort, our delta V, in order to expand our orbit. And we know we're going to have plenty left. Still thrusting away. Get ready to hit the good old X key when this reaches zero. Not far to go. There we go, that's close enough. We have a periapse of 79, an apoapse, <laughs> I said enough, that's plenty, of 127. So we have an orbit, and we know we have a delta V of 458 left. That's a 10 second burn. So that's plenty to get Jeb home again. Well, I hope you found this little mod spotlight useful. I'd like to thank you for watching, and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.